Hey, what's up everybody? So as most of you probably already know, the Russian cargo ship known as Progress 27M will not be able to reach the International Space Station. So today I want to talk about why it failed and what we're going to do about it. For this, your space pod for April 30th, 2015. Russia's Progress cargo ship is an unmanned version of the Soyuz capsule. Their designs are similar, but there's a lot of differences between them. The main thing with the Progress is that it's completely unmanned and uses up all the available room for cargo and supplies. The Progress spaceship also delivers a lot of propellants to the International Space Station so that they can do orbital reboosts so that the space station doesn't suffer from orbital decay and run the risk of re-entering Earth's atmosphere. For this mission, the Progress 27M, it was the 59th Progress vessel that was supposed to be able to rendezvous with the International Space Station. It launched early on Tuesday, April 28th from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. And its launch appeared to be normal, and even the NASA's mission control commentators said that the booster's upper stage did separate, and the two solar panels on the vessel did deploy. However, there was no confirmation that the antennas that allowed the ground to be able to control the spacecraft deployed, especially the KERS antenna, which allow it to have automatic docking with the International Space Station. Onboard cameras later showed that the Progress vessel was wildly spinning in orbit, and it was confirmed that it used up just about all of its propellant trying to possibly reorient itself, or some sort of Gemini phenomenon where one thruster was stuck firing. We don't exactly know what happened or why it used up all of its propellant. Something else that may provide a clue as to what happened is the United States Air Force Joint Space Operations Center reported tracking 44 objects, presumably debris, in the vicinity of the Progress vessel and its Soyuz upper stage. It's unknown whether those pieces of debris are from the upper stage or from the Progress itself. When this mission was launched, it was supposed to be able to take the shortcut route, which would take only about six hours to rendezvous with the space station. Once they first detected the problems, they then postponed it to take a two-day rendezvous mission to the International Space Station. But since they've been able to detect that there isn't any propellant left, even if they do regain control of the vessel, the docking has been completely called off and they're just going to let the progress, all the debris and its upper stage, re-enter the atmosphere and burn up. Right now, the worry is that when it re-enters the atmosphere, there are some pieces of debris that will survive. And the question is, where will those pieces of debris land? Hopefully, over the ocean, any of the oceans of Earth somewhere. But if they do happen to fall over some sort of populated area, hopefully the damage will be minimal, if any at all. That's, that's just, you know, worth case scenario. According to a recent inventory of all the supplies at the lab, they have enough food, water, air, and other crew supplies to be able to last them until sometime in August. That's if no other cargo vessels are able to rendezvous with the space station. However, SpaceX is sending their seventh commercial resupply services mission to the space station sometime in June. Right now it's scheduled for June 19th, but that may or may not be pushed back a little bit. So with that mission, they will be able to continue on even further. And then in middle of August, Japan will be sending their HTV cargo vessel to the space station to send up even more supplies. So things should be okay. There's a lot of redundancy and the crew is not in danger of running out of supplies. And they're also not in danger of the progress rendezvousing and, and having some sort of gravity international space station blowing up into a million pieces sort of scenario. So the crew is safe. They have plenty of supplies and and hopefully things will keep going. And later on this year, in November, Orbital Sciences, whose Antares rocket blew up last October, they have since hired Lockheed Martin, or rather United Launch Alliance, to use one of their Atlas V vehicles to send their next Cygnus cargo vessel to the International Space Station, like I said, in November. So as far as supplies and, and all of that goes, everything should be okay. The next Progress flight is scheduled for August 6th, however that's probably going to be postponed until they're able to complete an investigation as to why this happened. Also there's a Soyuz vehicle that's going to be bringing up fresh crew members to the International Space Station targeted for launch on May 26th. That could also be postponed if they find any sort of commonality between the problem that happened on this Progress launch and the Soyuz vehicle since the two are, are so similar. 
My sympathies go out to Ros Cosmos. I hope they are able to find what this problem was and correct the problem very soon so that it won't impact future launches too much. It's a really good thing that we have redundancy with SpaceX's Dragon capsule, Japan's HTV vehicle, and even Orbital Science's Cygnus vehicle as well. Things will be okay, but I still feel sorry for everyone at Ros Cosmos. Hopefully heads won't fly too much because of this. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Michael Clark, and please let me know what you think about this whole failed mission. It sucks, but it just sucks. <laughs> if you're interested in helping us to bring you space news like this, then please visit patreon.com slash spacepod and become one of our patrons. That would help out greatly in being able to make these sort of videos. Good news or bad news. Hopefully I'll be able to bring you guys some good news next week if I don't see you on the live show this weekend. I'm going to be at the Space Access Conference here in Phoenix, Arizona, and I'll be able to cheer myself up at that conference. I'm going to have a lot of fun there. I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. You know, if you really wanted to, Vladimir Putin could probably use his superpowers to go up there and take control of the Progress vessel and dock it to the space station himself. <laughs>